Jalen Yee here at Cabrina Jiu Jitsu being joined by the one and only, the legend himself, Mr. Tony Ferguson. Now, I love the Champ Shit Only seminar, and it looks like all your students are loving it too. Absolutely. Uh, it's awesome to be here in Las Vegas International Fight Week, kicking ass and chewing bubblegum. So, yeah, just having fun with it, and uh, my pops told me, make sure you smile during it, so you found it. Yes, and I see a lot of smiles here at the seminar for sure, but will you be doing more of these, like, nationwide? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can't sandbag forever. Nobody really knew that I knew wrestling. So we were at the PI yesterday and um, we were turning some heads. There was around like 20 people watching. And uh, I brought one of my agents from uh, Vayner Sports. And they were just really impressed with my grappling. I was moving super fast and uh, felt really good. Hit probably around like 10 rounds of boxing. A um, lot of technique in Gra from Grand Valley State. So it was dope to move around, man. I mean, it feels good to be at the PI again. And uh, we got a couple things coming up, man. I haven't sparred in about five to six years. And I've been doing my own thing. Last camp, training with 250-year-olds. So, I mean, everybody's training with world champs. So, like I said, can't stand back forever. Well, speaking of world champs and people you've been training with, I saw that you've been working with Callum Walsh and Freddie Roach, right? Yeah, Callum's one of my students. I've been taking him under my wing. Uh, I told him exactly when he first came out. I was like, hey, you have an opportunity. You don't have any pro fights. You can go to the Olympics or you can go pro. And so he's going to say if he goes to the Olympics, he would have to stay in Ireland. But he wanted to turn pro, make some money, which is really dope. So I've been kind of just trying to just be there for him and work out with him and make sure that somebody's there for him, man. Because Brock Lesnar did the exact same thing, and a lot of my coaches did the same thing for me. And it's paying it forward. And Caleb's, Caleb's an excellent athlete. I'm just uh, happy to be a part of it. So who do you think you will be working with for your upcoming fight? Uh, a lot of people. I've been offered like a lot of opportunities from different people. Uh, Close mouth doesn't get fed. I learned it from one of my trainers. And so I um, talked to Cap, uh, John Hackman, Coach Hackman, for about an hour. Uh, online just kind of bullshit and which is really cool is you know Chuck Liddell's coach I learned a lot from him and keeping in touch with Brandon Gibson you know over here at Fight Syndicate just a lot of people want me to come and work with them but it's me getting out of my comfort zone um, I've always kept a lot of stuff to myself if I'm on Instagram live it's only like five minutes the opportunity is now I don't want to compete with a lot of people at first everybody was wearing suits I started wearing suits wasn't the first one but I kept it going I wore sunglasses and everybody was like ah oh, it's cringe but everybody does this shit now Goofy workouts is the same thing, and everybody kind of started just following trend. And when even before I knew that was happening, I just always been that way, just doing my own thing. And now it's about that time to be able to go out there, demonstrate what I know, which is wrestling. I'm a wrestler. Show everybody that I know what the fuck I'm doing, and have these opportunities with coaches, and follow through. That means getting out of my comfort zone, uh, which is cool, it's easy, and making sure I'm smiling while I'm doing it. Absolutely, and you're a trendsetter, no doubt. I saw you post that you're 187.8. You posted your weight on the scale. So is it safe to say your next fight will be at welterweight? My next fight's going to be against Khabib. I'm going to pull that son of a bitch, that cake eater motherfucker. Uh, the idea is to go on tough and coach. Like I say, you can't sandbag forever. I took four fights, opportunities to be able to go out there, demonstrate to the UFC that I'm a go-getter. Uh, win or lose, it was just going to be opportunity for Khabib to have film. If you're going to have film, why aren't you going to take the fight? Your pops was the only one that said that this was the fight that you wanted. I'm not saying the world's going to end if we take this fight, but some shit happened. I mean, it's one of the, like say, cursed fights. But even if I go and coach against him, I know I'm a better coach. I have a better coaching set. And it took a full pandemic for me to lose. Um, I even told uh, Oliveira, I saw him yesterday, and I told him and his coach in Spanish, I was like, I didn't even prepare jujitsu for you. I was like, I just took a fight just because. And I brought in a lot of people just to get them paid because it was during the pandemic. So imagine if I have a real fight. Half the people out there doesn't even know that I do magic. So I'm a magician too. So the object is to, if you watch the movie Prestige, they couldn't figure out how the old man did the trick. He had to change his whole lifestyle. I told Hunter the same thing. I was like, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I'm out there doing what I want now. And that's actually not sandbagging. So now the opportunity, 170 or 155, it's up to me. I had the opportunity to just let them know what I want to do, be a shot caller, and then let them know, like always, I'm ready, I'm cool, I'm in action. So I started sparring in a couple of days. I got two months off layoff, which is cool. Took a quick kick to the face, which is cool. I mean, needed that to wake some shit up. I had enough of it. So like I said, you can't sandbag forever. You have to actually be coached. You know, I'll, I know I'm long-winded, but Coach Marty Morgan was one of the ones in The Ultimate Fighter. I let him, I let somebody take me down. And in there he said, did you let him take you down? I was like, yeah, coach. I thought we were doing takedowns. And even before then, Dos Santos, he threw us in the cage and we were picking teams. But there was everybody in the cage sparring. I said, fuck this, somebody's gonna get hurt. Miles Jury ended up getting hurt. So what I did is I found myself in a corner, I threw a fucking flying armbar and I just laid there. Just letting the dude do that. And they thought I was a pud, so they didn't pick me. My idea was to go on Team Lesnar. 
So when Coach Lesnar, he was like, Tony, Tony, you're a wrestler, right? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I let the guy take me down. Marty Morgan says, did you let him take you down? I said, yeah, I thought we were drilling. He's like, don't you let anybody take you down. But he told that me. He, he set that right for me. And then I ended up winning the whole thing. But I need those coaches. I need someone to be able to push me that way. Otherwise, I'm going to sandbag. I'm just going to be comfortable doing my own shit. So here we go. Champ shit only. Well, lastly, speaking of coaching and the Ultimate Fighter, like you mentioned, I mean, I know you and Habib, I mean, it seems like even Habib's coach, Javier Mendez, we spoke to him not too long ago on the Schmozone podcast. He seems interested. It looks like Dana White seems interested. So where do those talks stand? Uh, he even said, I was, my, my Russian fans are awesome too, you know, fans from Ukraine, everybody. It's kind of interesting how it goes. I'm not saying it's U.S. versus Russia, but it'd be kind of interesting. Joe Lewis had the opportunity to be able to compete and just kind of go out there and do that. That's a chance and an opportunity for myself and for Khabib to be able to go out there and demonstrate what we know, which is sports. Uh, he's 29-1 and one if I'm concerned. You know, I mean, BOGO on Tuesdays for Tiramisu. It's an old joke, but I never poke fun at his family, never poke fun at his religion. I don't have to do that. If he's man enough and he has the balls, or he just got in the Hall of Fame, I got time to be in the Hall of Fame. I'm already in that bitch. I'm not worried about that. I saw the new belt. I had to build my house a little bit bigger, so that way I had a new shelf to put the belt on there. It took me for a second to be able to want that. I'm a wrestler. I used to get pissed off because I used to wrestle. I used to throw my medals in the fucking woods. I used to take my wrestling charts and rip them up because I would get so burned out on this stuff. I've been doing sports for over 30 some years. I found the interest again, I found the fire, and I think a lot of people see that. I'm putting on size too, so if it's at 170 or 185, it's not a matter. I bumped up two weight classes in college, I wrestled John Jones and I lost by one point. So I'm used to being able to wrestle in any way, I can do this stuff, but I have to have the coaching. And so I know you coaches that are watching, I'm gonna make sure I contact you, you guys already know who you are. And for all your fans who can't wait to see more of you, what would you like to let them know? Uh, we're going to be doing a couple meet and greets this week. Uh, obviously, we'll be at the fights. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for always supporting. You guys are fucking badass, whether I get fucking handled in the cage, which looks like it, or I go out there and I handle business. You had to go out there and get the win streak, the losing streak, performance of the night, knockout of the night, submission of the night, all of the above. But now it's clearing the palette and making sure we start at one.